Well, hello, audio friend. Graham here from RecordingRevolution.com. You are smack dab in the middle of our Mix a Song from Scratch mini-series. I'm walking you through a step-by-step plan for how to mix your music. Once you've recorded it into your software of choice, here in front of you, I am using a free piece of software called Pro Tools First. So you can use something free like I'm using or your favorite DAW that you've purchased. Whatever it is, I'm teaching you how to then take your recordings that hopefully you've worked hard at capturing the performance and and miking it up in your little home studio, which is exactly what I've done. I have a little home studio. I don't use that word lightly. It is exactly the size of my studio. Once it's recorded, mixing is a powerful step that will take the recordings and enhance them and present them in a more radio ready format. So I've been walking you through the first two steps. We looked at the static mix and how to do some mix bus processing. Very, very important. Um, Go check out those videos if you missed them. Today, let's talk about your most important mixing tool, and that is EQ or an equalizer. Okay. This is the power tool of power tools for mixing. This is the mixer's secret weapon for how to actually get the tracks to blend well and have clarity and punch and all that kind of stuff. Um, Let's just start where we are. If you're looking at your mix in this kind of edit view like this, where you see the audio waves like I have here in Pro Tools. In Pro Tools, this is literally called the edit window. Um, You can flip over to your mix window, either in Pro Tools here in the window mode, just choose mix, but you'll probably have something similar. Maybe you'll be able to see both screens at the same time. I uh, know Logic can do that and Studio Ones where you sort of have a little bit of the edit window at the top and the faders at the bottom. But you just want to get over to this view where you can see your faders. These are the same tracks left to right as I had top to bottom. And if you ignore these boxes here, which represent my virtual amps and my virtual instruments that I recorded with, I really have no mixing uh, or processing or plugins, the only two being here on my master fader or my mix bus. We did that in the last video. So now it's time to go to the individual tracks. And I want to show you a method for how to think about using EQ because you can either use EQ to hurt your tracks, make them harsh, make them dull, make them overly hyped, or you can use them in a subtle musical way that just enhances everything you have. And that's what I want to do here. Let's get to a part of the song, actually, where uh, the acoustic guitar comes in, because that's what I think I want to work on here. So let's think about the acoustic guitar. Let me show you how to think about EQ with something like this. What I'm going to do is in the inserts section of Pro Tools here, this is where you can insert an effect. That's what it's called, inserts. I'm going to grab under my plugins, I'm going to grab my seven band EQ. And something to point out here, you might see something like a one band or three band or seven band. What does that mean? That just means, let me drag this over here. That just means how many points Um, can you process in one plugin on the EQ? So here I've got one, two, three, four, five colored dots. You see them represented here as one, two, three, four, five bands. And then I have two filters, a low filter and a high filter. So that's band six and seven. So really, this is the same as, let's say, uh, an EQ of one band where I only have one frequency I can adjust at a time. I can only boost or cut one place at a time here. This is the exact same as seven of these little guys. So it's no different, you know, just so you know, it's just more convenient if I'm gonna do more than one or two or three boosts or cuts, and once I can do multiple ones here inside one window. So there you go, that's that's what the bands are. And uh, in other videos, I've gone more in depth into what all these knobs mean here, but let me show you a method of how to work with EQ. I've got this acoustic guitar here. Let's get right on the chorus. And the important thing to think about is what is the role of this instrument? 
this acoustic guitar's role is a texture piece. I'll say that a lot because a lot of times acoustic guitars are that. It's not the main instrument on this chorus, but it's meant to be a nice break from the verse and have this cool metallic string texture that cuts through over the distorted guitars and feels different. So what I want to do is make sure that that's coming through in the mix. I recorded it, but if I if I listen to everything together, I don't really hear the acoustic very well. Now, I could just turn it up, but that would then make it too loud. So what is it at here? It's at minus six. Let's turn it up. Because there, you hear it a little better, but even then, it's a little cloudy, okay? So what I want to do is make sure that I can hear it without just having to crank it. So let's use an EQ. The first move I'm going to make is called the high pass filter. Over here, you see HPF. This is also called a low cut. This is a really simple EQ. It's a filter, and it filters out frequencies. So we want to filter out some of the low frequencies because the acoustic guitar, as full as it sounds, doesn't need all that low body because you don't hear it. It gets covered up by the bass guitar, by the thick distorted guitars, um, you don't hear it in the mix anyway, but it's taking up space. So let's roll off some of that. So I'm going to engage it, and then you choose the frequency knob and roll off how high up do you want to roll this thing. So I'm going to roll it, let's say, up to 120. Let's take a listen to that. It's not drastically different, which is good. So we've removed actually a lot of woofy low end that might just fill up space that we don't need. So I've done that. Next, what I like to think about with something like an acoustic guitar, let's say, is some low mid frequencies that just sound kind of woofy and nasty and sound kind of cheap. And so what I'm gonna do to find what frequency that might be, because there's no magical number here, don't think about EQ as, oh, just tell me the numbers, like 200 hertz, you always do this, or 400 hertz, you always do that. I've got some rules of thumb and some favorite go-tos, but you really have to experiment because every instrument's different and the frequency spectrum means nothing. The numbers mean nothing. The sound means everything. So what I'm gonna do is grab the low mid, you know, let's say the orange band here, and do an extreme boost to move it around and find what sounds the weirdest. Everything will sound weird when you do an extreme boost, but what? where do I hear a lot of energy that sounds really ugh? And that's where it's gonna be my spot to cut. So let's take a listen. So right there, it sounds like a really cheap acoustic guitar. It doesn't have body, it doesn't have clarity, it's just kind of a pointless frequency to me. So that ended up being 258 or so. So I'm going to remove about 3 dB of that. So we have a nice little cut. Now let's see what we've done so far. Two cuts. We've thinned it out, we've cleaned it up a little bit. So that's good, that cleans it up. And then one final move I wanna make here is find what is the best frequency here on the acoustic guitar? What is the, the point in the frequency spectrum that makes this acoustic guitar helpful to our mix and cut through? And I want to feature a little bit more of that. So I'm gonna use maybe this uh, high mid frequency, this green one here to boost and find a sweet spot that actually sounds good and not too harsh and then I'll emphasize a little bit more of that.
So I kind of like the strumming there at 4.8K. So let me just leave in a little bit of that. And a little note here, if you're going to do a cut, I am a fan of a tighter cue or a more narrow cut here. And if you're going to do a boost, I'm a fan of a more broad, gentler, wider boost um, for the notch there. So here we've done two cuts, one boost. The final step here, I want to look at the input knob versus the output knob. This is important because it, once you start to EQ, you realize all EQ is doing is turning things up or down. It's just a, a volume knob that's smarter than the average volume knob because it's kind of tied to specific frequencies. So we can just turn up or down just certain frequencies, which is very clever. So in essence, you're changing the volume of the track anytime you do boosts or cuts. So you want to check to make sure you're not just making the track louder or quieter. You want it to keep it at the same volume. Because remember, in the very first video, the static mix, we found what we thought was the best volume for the most part for that track. So we like the volume where it was. We just want to change the tone. So I'm going to look and make sure I'm not making this too quiet or too loud. And if it is too quiet or too loud, I can use this final output knob to make up the difference so that it's the same volume in and out of the EQ. All right, so I had to turn it up about one and a half dB, which makes sense. I did two cuts and only one boost, so it was getting quieter after my EQ. So let's take a listen before and after to what we did to this acoustic guitar. much, much better, right? It's very drastic now when you add those three subtle moves together. Uh, the individual two cuts and one boost by themselves weren't drastic, but you can see how the cumulative effect of those three moves really transformed the sound of that acoustic guitar. I feel like it got more clarity involved, uh, more brightness, less muffly, you know, less woofy, a more defined. Um, so you can see the drastic results that simple, subtle EQ moves can make. Now, I've been showing you this in solo mode. Solo is when you click the big S that makes it mute every other track, and it makes it much easier to hear what you're working on. Now, this is a massive, massive uh, point of failure for most new mixers, and I really want to point this out to you. I'm using solo here to educate you, to show you what I can do with an EQ. But in real life, I would actually never make these EQ decisions while listening in solo. And that is because I could make this guitar sound amazing by itself. But then the moment you bring in the rest of the instruments, the rest of the tracks, that sculpted, perfectly EQ track could not work at all. And then I will have wasted time doing something that literally is pointless. The goal of a mix is to make every track sound good together, not make a bunch of pretty individual tracks, make everything sound good together. So typically I would do this EQ while listening in context with everything else, which is most important. It's harder to do, yes, but it's worth fighting for. I just wanted to show you this in today's video. Let's take a listen though now to everything in context. And I want you to focus on the acoustic guitar. I'm still going to just leave everything the same. And remember, nothing's changed, just the EQ processing. And I'm going to bypass the EQ on the acoustic guitar and see if you can hear a difference in the, the guitar. Does it come in? Does it come out? Is it more apparent? Does it disappear? Take a listen. Yeah. 
again, subtle, but you can hear more of the strumming of the acoustic guitar in the mix, which is important. It's that texture piece that's there. And I've gotten rid of stuff that wasn't adding to the acoustic guitar anyway, which frees up more energy, more headroom for the upper mids, which is where it strums. So that's one way to think about EQ. It is a simple, smart volume knob that can help sculpt your track. So what I like to do after I've done mix bus processing is go through and do EQ processing on any track that needs it. This acoustic guitar was a great example. I wanted to make it cut through the mix a little bit better. Maybe next I would grab uh, the lead vocal and make sure that has enough clarity and scoop out any weird frequencies that are muddying up the lead vocal. Uh, maybe I'd work on the drums to make them pop a bit more. Maybe it's the bass. Maybe I really want to fatten up the bass and smooth it out and make more low end apparent or get rid of some of the honkiness or maybe the finger picking needs to come through a little bit more on the bass. You want to systematically work your way through the tracks as needed. And those two words are really important, as needed. Do you need to EQ everything? No. Only if you're having trouble hearing something. Use EQ to enhance what's already there. And that way you're using your most powerful tool and you're going line by line by line to make the tracks come to life a little bit more and have more clarity and more space and more of their own pocket of the mix. So everything pops out nicely. Now, before you go, I know EQ can be overwhelming. And some of the stuff I talked about today might be new to you. Thinking about EQ as a smart volume knob, understanding what the knobs do, how to just cue and frequency and gain and how much should a booster cut or what all these questions might be flying through your head. And I understand what I've done for you is put together an EQ checklist. This is a seven step checklist for how to think about using EQ. This is a really, really helpful tool. It's a one or two page PDF you can download, have on your phone or tablet or print it up and have it with you. So when you're doing your next mix, when you're grabbing an EQ plugin, you can go through and understand, okay, what did Graham say? What does this knob mean? What do I do here? How would I approach this? How can I use EQ strategically? How would I move through my mix? And it walks you through the seven steps, the way I view and think about EQ. And it might really help you next time you're mixing so you don't have to pull up this video again or go looking for EQ videos. You can have it right there on hand so you can focus on mixing. So to get it, it's free. Just go to eqchecklist.com. I'll put the link right here in the video and it's in the description box for you. Go to eqchecklist.com. It's a free, simple PDF download. It'll get right to the point so that you can get back to mixing. And if you can get EQ right, you really will get your mix sounding 80% of the way there. Honestly, EQ is where most people just lose their mix. But if they get this right, everything else is relatively icing on the cake. EQ is your mix. It is the main clarity balance beyond the volume faders. So it is the most important plugin you could use. And that's why I emphasize EQ a lot. And it's a very simple tool to use once you understand it. And you'll feel more empowered to be able to get a good mix that sounds good on any kind of system because you'll have gotten EQ under your belt. And this EQ checklist is really, really gonna help you. So go download it at eqchecklist.com is my gift to you. Now in the next video, I'm gonna walk you through compression. Huge, huge part of the mixing process. You don't wanna miss that. I'll give you a simple tip on how to rein in vocals and things like that and make things pop nicely with a compressor plug-in. Until then, subscribe to these videos so you know when the next one comes out and I'll see you soon.